Garuda! Regal, stylish, elegant, found tossed in the Velus like a piece of trash, apparently. Seriously, Unico is just like, hey, thanks for reigniting our rebellion. Uh, by the way, I don't know what the fuck this thing is, but someone was dumpster diving and they found it, so here you go, I guess. Anywho, Garuda was a frame that a lot of folk, including myself, weren't really sure what to make of when she was originally shown off. Everyone was just kind of thinking along the lines of Valkyr 2, maybe? Now, between that and the confusing as fuck name relating to a bird god, and Rebecca insisting that this is another Another goddamn vampire frame, we wouldn't really know what she was about until she was released, other than that she was gory? There were also early concerns that we were shown her original 4, which was on track into making her Revenant 2, and well, we already know how Revenant turned out. But luckily, DE decided to change it, and besides that, we finally have our hands on her. So the question is, is Miss Salad Fingers here worth getting? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she is. Seriously, this chick is something else. There's something special about being able to launch yourself at an enemy, ripping their heart out of their ass before chucking it at this poor bastard, who is really regretting his life choices when he found out that he was going to be deployed into a fight involving a chick who really gets off on blood. Oh, and his best friend of 15 years is now impaled on a spike coming out of the floor. But anyways, let's get to how she do and what she do, starting with her abilities. Wanna know the best part about Garuda? She'd make a fantastic b-ball player. Her one causes her to lunge towards her enemy, ripping out their life force and adding a certain amount of damage to the blood ball depending on the target's maximum health. She also gets this nifty shield that absorbs incoming fire, which will also add to the ball's damage. Additionally, she can also run into enemies with the shield to generate damage for the ball as well. Now, Karuna can hold onto her b-ball for as long as she wishes even after the shield disappears. If she taps one again on the target, she'll repeat the process mentioned before without having to lose her ball. She'll simply add more damage into the ball. By holding one, Garuda will take the ball in hand and begin siphoning her energy into the ball to increase the damage further. And just a quick side note here, the higher the base damage obtained on the ball before charging, the quicker you'll charge extra damage into the ball. And whenever she's ready, Garuda can release the ability key and let her b-ball fly. <laughs> Now there is a bit more to her 1, because it has some synergy with her 4 that we'll get into in a bit, but this is the basic gist of how her 1 works. Because it gets most of its damage from scaling sources, aka the enemy's maximum HP value, the damage of the projectiles that the shield absorbs, and the manual charging that Garuda can do, her 1 has some extremely solid scaling into late game. Oh, and a little important detail here, probably should mention it, not that big of a deal or anything, but the damage goes through walls! That's kind of a major bonus because having a frame that has offensive damage abilities that ignores walls is super, super good. But what about armor, you may ask? After all, it doesn't really look like the Blood Ball is doing much even to trash mobs at high levels. Well, not to worry. She has a solution to that and we'll be getting into it later. Now her 2 is much simpler than her 1 in terms of mechanics. You just throw your angry, blood horny lady at someone and she turns them into a blood fountain. The health that the altar gives every second is determined based on your power strength, and I don't think the enemy themselves matter at all. Like, you won't get more healing if you use it on a heavy unit compared to a light unit, for example. However, there is a bit of a PSA that needs to be made here. An enemy that has been made into an altar, as far as the game is concerned, is still an asshole shooting at you. Don't mind that the guy is dying a slow and painful death while his allies watch as the life drains from his eyes, quite literally, nah 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 nah. He still counts as a hostile target. Meaning, if you're doing, say, a defense, for example, and there's a Groot on your team, you may notice that the waves take an oddly long time to complete every now and then. Yeah, that's because there's some dickhead in the corner with a spike up his ass. He still counts as an active enemy, and so they must first be dealt with. Said spiked ass dickhead is also invulnerable, so the only way you can actually kill him is to either wait out the ability timer, or to have Garuda cancel the scale manually. And yes, Garudas, you can do that! And this PSA also applies to Nidususes. To cancel the skill, all you have to do is aim at the altered enemy and hit 2 again. It will drop them instantly and they can now be cleaned up, 
if they're not already dead, which leads me to the last quirk of this ability. Similar to Nidus' Parasitic Link target, enemies that are affected by the altar technically do still take damage from your weaponry and whatnot. And what's happening is that the damage is being stored into a buffer. Once the altar ends or Garuda cancels it, all of that buffer damage is instantly inflicted onto the target. Meaning that, well, you can do this. Alright, so Gerudus 3 is going to be one of two things for you. An ability that lets you save a mod slot, since you don't have to put on Rage or Hunter or Adrenaline, or it's going to be that one ability that you accidentally press because you had an oopsie finger, or you just forgot that 2 is in fact NOT the 3 button, and you end up getting yourself killed. Ooh. Because yes sir indeed, her 3 cuts her health in half by 50% each time it's used, but in return, gives you energy. Depending on your build, this ability will either be highly appreciated or just kinda... there? It's one of those abilities that is less part of the frame's kit and more of just a nice-to-have filler ability. Though it does serve another purpose besides just giving you energy. Gerda's passive increases her damage output the less health she has. So if you want to give your 1 or your 4 a boost, it might be worth it to cut your health down to 50% every now and then. Oh, but I will say this, for whatever goddamn reason, the energy that you get back from this doesn't scale off of your power strength. It scales off of power efficiency, which is so bizarre because frames like Trinity? Energy Vampire scales off of power strength. And let me tell you, it'd be so much more convenient to have it scale off of strength as well, because Garuda needs a lot of it. And last up is her 4, which is probably the staple of her kit and serves multiple purposes. Gerda enters a stance, begins charging and expanding this reticle here, and when she lets go, she lets loose her Al the Edge. A bunch of blades fly out and home in on targets. Enemies that don't die from the initial bit of damage are then marked by Garuda's symbol. Whilst in this marked state, enemies have a chance to suffer a bleed proc from whatever damage they take in that state. The chance of the proc occurring scales with your power strength, and the chance becomes guaranteed at 200% power strength. At lower levels, say around to about level 30, all you really have to do is press an old 4 for a second and then just release it and she'll murderize anything in the path of the reticle, other than heavy units anyways. Oh yeah, and the blades also don't give a flying rat's ass about walls either, much like her one. They will seek you out from now until the end of time, no fucking door is going to save you. So all Garuda really has to do is just assume that an enemy is in an area and then well... <laughs> yeah. Now at higher levels, this becomes far less viable, at least against anything with armor. Armor makes the damage negligible, but this is where her ability synergy comes into play. So just how do you handle these beefier armored enemies with her 4 if the damage is doing fuck all? You just... you just throw your 1 at them. Yeah. This is what you're gonna be doing whenever you're in a higher level mission. You throw your 4 out, and then you follow up with a b-ball toss. The reason this works is down to the slash proc bonus that her 4 provides. Blade procs work like this. When you hit an enemy with an attack that is slash type damage and you get its proc, slash will take 35% of the initial hit's damage and use that 35% value as bleed tick damage. The kicker here, however, is that this bleed tick completely ignores armor. Now, enemies affected by her 4 mark can be bled by any type of damage. That includes her b-ball toss. And what did we learn about her one? Yeah, that. Sure, you're only getting 35% of the Blood Ball's base damage made into slash ticks, but we're talking about a shit ton of base damage. So 35% is still going to be an insane amount. So in most cases, if you want to give a group of enemies, the ideal way would be to use one on a heavy unit ahead of time, since you gain more additional base damage in the ball depending on the max health of your target, and then whenever you decide to use your four, follow up by throwing the ball immediately in the general direction of your enemies. No charge should be necessary and this will scale at any level because her one scales up with the enemy's health pool. Now, if you can't find a heavy unit, that's not really a big issue because you can just lunge at a lancer two or three times, or you could siphon energy into the ball for a little under a second before tossing, and that should handle the job nicely as well. So in general, Gruda is built to be a pretty damn solid frame if you're into offensive-based frames and you like her blood and gore aesthetic. But holy hot damn if she doesn't have some problems! For one, Garuda's setup to do damage is a good deal longer than what it needs to be, and this isn't helped when you consider that, at the time of writing the script, natural talent is bugged on her and it does not affect either her 1 or her 2. 
So yeah, that's kind of a huge deal. But even if we fix that, when you compare Garuda's setup time for dealing damage, it's pretty mediocre. For example, Gara here can nuke level 95 corrupt Lancers in one hit with her one, within the same range as Garuda's one toss, as well as being able to do it through walls. But unlike Garuda, Gara has zero setup time. She simply casts her held version of her one and anything within that nigh on 20 meter range just crumbles if they're not a heavy unit. Now, can Gara do this one shot above level 100 like Garuda can? Probably not. I certainly can't make it happen, but let's be honest, there's not many situations where you're dealing with enemies above level 100. So does Garuda's advantage in that department really mean a whole lot if it means sacrificing her damage setup time? I do try not to compare frames, however, and if you look at how Garuda works, she is good. If you were put in a team with, say, a Necros, a Hydroid, and a Trinity, Regardless of whether you pick something like Garuda or Saren, you would still be that team's field clearer. She fits the role, but her setup time needs some major work. With all that said, I rate Garuda 4 out of number. Can I leave? Can I go? Okay, sweet, because I'm gonna go back to ragdolling myself off of K-Drives, because that shit is fun.